So if you want to be in long-term relationship longer than five minutes, <laughs> you must know how to have difficult conversations. Learning how to feel what's true for you, to know what's true for you, to trust what's true for you and say it out loud is one of the most courageous and messy and confronting things that you can ever do, but it's also the most liberating. Not just for you, it's not just like, I've just said what I want to say and now I'm done, that's just getting your own needs met. But when you can look your partner in the eye and you can say, I need to let you know, this is what's really true for me right now. I'm feeling really vulnerable. I'm feeling really angry. I'm feeling really uncomfortable about whatever it is. When you can open up a conversation with your partner and express that in a way that is not shaming, not blaming, not making your partner wrong, but just as a revelation of this is what's true for me today. Because we all know that how we feel are a bit like clouds in the sky. They come, they go. Sometimes you get a repetitive feeling and that's just your own neurosis, your own trauma, your own triggering. Sometimes it's a repetitive feeling because there's something deeper that's going on that is trying to inform you. And when you can tap into that and say that out loud, you actually liberate your partner as well. We're always rippling out what's going on on the inside, always. And so if you think, for example, let's say you're having doubts about the relationship. You don't know if this is a relationship for you. You've got to know that your partner is fucking feeling that on a very subtle level. Maybe they can't articulate what's going on. Maybe they start not trusting you a little bit. Maybe they start, I don't know, having a go, kind of being a little bit antagonistic with you. But whatever their patterning is in response to, because it'll be a, an uncertainty feeling, a feeling of uncertainty, you have to know that however you're feeling deeply impacts your partner, whether you say it out loud or not. So the, the dilemma you put yourself in is if you don't say it out loud, it's in the way. And something that my partner, Mo, says all the time to the couples we work with, whatever is unrevealed is in the way. Whether you believe it or not, whether you want to acknowledge it or not, it's in the way. So how do you have difficult conversations? How do you have honest conversations without shaming or blaming or accusing the other person? Have a conversation about it. And when someone says to you, when your partner says to you, this is how I feel and this is what I think, just get it. You don't have to agree with it. You don't have to like it, but just to get it. You know, I get that you feel that. I really get it. There's something profoundly um, powerful and healing about just getting the other person because that's what we all want, right? We all want to be gotten. So create time, practice healthy communication. Don't blame or shame because you know just as well as I do that on one given day he might do something and it just feels fine and on another day you want to scratch his eyes out. Is that him or is that you? Well, that's the inquiry. Because if you're really, if your nervous system is stretched, it could be you. Maybe you're really, really tired. Um, maybe, maybe it's an accumulation of residue. He does that thing all the time. When you're talking with him about something really important, he's not present and it hurts but you just feel fucked off and you don't say that it hurts, so you slam some cupboards around. I do that sometimes. <laughs> That's what I know. If I start slamming cupboards around, I know there's something I've not revealed to myself and to my partner. So I'll go to my partner and I'll say, hey, listen, I've just realized I'm slamming a few cupboards. When you said this, I felt really hurt. I would need this. It's just, it's basic communication, but it's, the willingness more than anything to have uncomfortable conversations. It's essential, otherwise it's in the way. It's 
always there, the elephant in the room.